So let's once again take stock in what we've got so far. We've got our Megamorphing series over here. We've got our tetrahedrons, our various cubes over here. We've got our rhombic dodecahedrons here. We've got our megaminxes here. We've got our slice turning dodecahedrons. And then our close cousins to each other, the axis cubes, the hexagonal dipyramids, and the ghost cubes. So, well, I kind of got fascinated with other layers. I'd heard about cuboids, but I still really didn't want to take down the basic shape of the cube. So I decided to kind of experiment with other types of, I guess you'd call them semi-cuboids, cubic puzzles, so to speak. The first that I decided to look at was this guy. Put that in range over here. The uh, cubic, not the cuboid, but the cubic, it's a 3x3x5, three by three by and uh, what I liked about it is that it still retained its cubic shape. But despite the fact that it did retain its cubic shape, there is a increasing complexity in terms of how it can be scrambled, which was kind of a new concept to me. With this came the discovery of cuboid strategy, where I was doing corner swaps and uh, edge swaps, adjacent and learning to deal with complementary layers. Uh, so got comfortable with that, decided I kind of liked that, but I still wanted to retain the cubic shape. I really wasn't interested in long kind of cuboid type shapes. So if I was going to do a cubic 3x3x5, three by three by, uh, then I was going to do a cubic 3x3x6. Three by three by and I thought that this was great fun because, again, you have a very interesting scrambled cube shape, but we kind of take it to the next level where we have individual components here that can also be scrambled. So, of course, in my attempt to continue in my feverish pitch of obsession in collecting, then I was going to go for the seven. So I did that too and found that these uh, strategies, although different from what I used before, were fairly intuitive, fairly easy to get or fairly easy to figure out and uh, something that I can kind of continue using the same concepts of, uh, of solving. So I was pretty happy with that and if I'm going to do that then I might as well instead of just the cube for you versions of this came White Eden products which you can see that these are all once again cubic type structures that have extra layers that can be dealt with. A roadblock version of this as well. More wood eaten products where, once again, still retaining the cubic shape, which is kind of what I figured would fit well with my collection. Imagine the, uh, seeing your cube along next to these other variants. I thought they looked pretty cool. You just had to learn how to deal with these other flavors, uh, these other uh, layers that were over here. A 3x3x9 three by three by version of this too. So I was getting more and more comfortable with cuboid type strategies or multiple layered strategies with this where all you had to do was deal with complementary layers uh, a 3 by 3 by 9 with a little split over here so you had the version 1 version 2 I decided to do crazy versions of that so I did a 3 by 3 by 7 just like I had with these guys but now I have circles on the top and circles on the bottom so it enhances that even more. Now what's interesting about these is I, but it started to shape shift a little bit, which was a little bit outside of my comfort zone. What if they glued a piece onto the top and called it a crazy three by three by eight. This is just glued onto the top of one of these, which is why when you turn it, it seems to have a, a different, it seems to have the, an extension that comes right above that. And this turns over here. So another three by three by eight. This looks like it's the same thing, version one and version two. Of course the difference is that this circle doesn't turn until you bring it into here. And then it turns. Whereas with this one, the circle does turn. So it uh, was a little bit of a variation. But with feverish pitch and with obsessive enthusiasm, I had to get them all. I had to collect them all. So even if it was a very subtle difference, such as this, which is a uh, a three by three, crazy three by three by six. You can see this doesn't turn. This is the same thing, but it does turn. Of it, but that's the thing about collecting. Once you get in the habit of it, once you get bitten by the bug, you can't help it. Here's another version. This is a interesting one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Another three by three by seven. It's a circle three by three by seven. We've seen this before. We saw that with this guy. What's the difference? Well, this turns. And this turn, and this turn, so it's bandaged. This one is bandaged, and this one is not. So it changed it just a little bit, enough to make me want to buy a different one. Then, of course, you have various types of roadblocks too. This one turns, and this one turns as well. 
and then you've got these that, uh, that can split down the edges. This was my first introduction to your very basic circle cube. Now, I've shown some circle cubes before, but this one was an interesting challenge because of the bandaging that happens with this, which means that I had to design a slightly different algorithm here, slightly different way of solving this thing, uh, but it's, it fit very well with these guys over here. Also, I'll say that Smaz did something very similar. This one also shapeshifts, but it's solved in pretty much exactly the same way. Very nice quality puzzle. And we'll bring these out over here and kind of put them in their own special place. The cubic puzzles and the crazy cubic puzzles over here. And I might as well show bringing up the rear over here is this tiny little hexamings puzzle. So what I decided to delve into is the first class of puzzles, which um, I took a look first at this guy over here, a 3x3x1. Now, three by three by kind of unique in that you can only do 180 degree turns. Although officially with this particular one, this QJ version, had a little bit of a twist in that you can shapeshift this one by going like this. Enhance the uh, strategy just a little bit more. But in any case, I figure if there's a 3x3x1, three by three by then perhaps there's a 3x3x2. Three by three by so, got that as well. So I figured if I was going to do a 3x3x2, three by three by then a 3x3x3, three 3x3x4. By three by three, three by three by and uh, really, the only difference is that you have this extra one over here. Not solved at all, unlike this guy over here. Well, go up to the next step, which is the 3x3x5. Three by three by so I got pretty fascinated with what this looked like. It uh, looked uh, pretty neat as a collection. And I would solve it the way I would solve the rest. Do 180 degree turns, and I would do okay. Then I learned about this interesting property of cuboids. That if you have even against even or odd against odd, in this case one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. If you actually turn an odd layer into another odd layer, you can make another 90 degree turn. I remember learning about that late at night and wondering if this new cube that I had would actually have that property because I didn't find it too difficult. I would uh, basically have a middle, solve these two and solve these two. But then when I added that shape shifting like this, it uh, enhanced the challenge just a little bit more. Here, if I turn a 3 into a 4, in, in other words, an odd into an even, I found that you couldn't shape shift. And I get a 3 by 3 by 6. Obviously, it's not quite fully proportional, but it doesn't really matter because even if it was, it would solve the same way. It doesn't really shape shift. And if I'm going to have that, then I might as well have, of course, you guessed it, a 3 by 3 by 7. This big guy over here. This big guy designed by Sigurd Weedle. And it's kind of like the 3x3x5, three by three by solved pretty much the same way, but as a 3x3x7, three by three by exerting the properties of shape shifting, putting that over there. That was about as far as I really needed to go regarding the 3x3 three three series. But if I'm going to do that, I might as well expand the cuboids into the 2x2 two two series as well. Starting off with a 2x2x1. Two by two by Next, of course, would come the 4x4 four four series. If we're going to have a 4x4x4, four by four by four, we'll go ahead and take it on down to a 4x4x1. Four by four by this is Ola Jansen's uh, great puzzle. Now, this one, because it's uh, even moving into an even, it, of course, can shapeshift. And this was uh, among the first of what I would call the floppy puzzles. And it showed various kinds of interesting parodies that I had to try to work my way around. 4x4x2, four by four by why not a 4x4x3? Four by four by More shape waste products. I started to understand the process of three-dimensionally printing. Three-dimensional printing pretty well. So 4x4x3, four by four by if that's a little too small for you, I got this big guy over here. Another 4x4x3. Four by four by very, very ingenious design over here. Um, giant, huge, but moves pretty well. I'm just going to take that out of the way for the moment. 4x4x3. Four by four by now we got our 4x4x4. Four by four by four. And then we might as well put in AE's 4x4x5, four by four by which is a nice, sharp looking domino type puzzle. And then if you're going to do a 4x4x5, four by four by of course you're going to have a 4x4x6, four by four by which is Tom Z's uh, fantastic puzzle. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, down to 6, so it means this can shape shift in every direction. So the 4x4x6 four by four by is more similar to the 2x2x4 two by two by because of the shape shifting capacity, which is also more similar to the 3x3x5 three three 
because of the shape shifting capacity. So as we're going up the staircase, you start to get different processes, different prospects. The lower version here, this being a floppy, this being a domino, this being just a cube, this being a domino, and this being a shape shifter. Well, if I'm gonna do the four x four series, what about a five x five series? We'll start it off with this over here and see where we can go. So we might as well start off with our five by five by one. Nice little floppy puzzle, brilliantly designed. This was a modification, five by five by one, if I'm gonna have that. Then, reaching a feverish pitch with my collection desires, a five by five by two. All right, nice little domino. Gone from floppy to domino, five by five by two. If I'm gonna have that, then I'm gonna want, of course, a five by five by three. Well, I got a couple to choose from. Along this vein, I've got this modification over here. Being a five by five by three, this is actually another type of a floppy shape-shifting puzzle. As, I can, as I'm turning five layers into three layers. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So as you can see, I can turn it up and turn it over here. Five by five by three. Now, it doesn't look quite as proportionate with these guys, but it is a five by five by three. So I can use, if I want a fully proportional one, Ola Jansen's version. Same kind of thing, same properties, but it's more proportionate without this, what's called Olsing effect. Five by five by three. I'll just put this in with this over here. One, two, three, five by five by four. Fairly easy to find. Interesting domino, nice, uh, cube by A, put this over to here, and of course the 5x5x5, five by five by five. and where else can we go from here? Well, we can do a 5x5x6. Five by five by do we have one of these? Sure do. This is made by Tanner Frisbee, 5x5x6, five by five by another type of a domino puzzle. Its characteristics are going to be very similar to this one and to this one. So put this big bohunk of a puzzle of a cuboid over here. Wide angle shot here, five by five by six. Okay, what about a five by five by seven? Sure. Okay, so it's a white puzzle, not a black puzzle. And it's smaller, which is good because it's nice and compact. This is a typical shape shifter, much like the three by three by five. This is a five by five by seven because I'm moving odd into odd. I'll put this little guy over here. Five by five by seven. How about a five by five by eight? Glad to oblige. Five by five by eight. A very nice moving Shapeways puzzle. Sponsored by Klaus and produced, of course, by Gregoire Fenning. So, take center stage. If I'm gonna do that, how about a five by five by nine? All right, why not? Five by five by nine, the behemoth of five by fives. And because you're turning a five into a nine, you can shape shift much the same way as you could with the five by five by seven. And that is about as far as I needed to go with the five by five series. Can we get an aerial shot here? So here's the five by five. So to rehash, we've got our two by two series crunched up over here. We've got our three by three cuboid series here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven over here. We've got our four layer series. Separate that out a little bit here so you can see it. Four layer series here, two, three, four, five, and six, and our giant five by five series. Over here, two, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, why stop with there? We'll move our five layer series back a little bit. Five layer series back. Well, I might as well include this. This is a three by three by five, mass produced version. Can shape shift, does everything a three by three by five does. How about a six layer series? Sure. We'll bring out this guy to introduce that. Yeah, I might as well bring out this guy here at this point. It is a cuboid. It's actually a five by five by five, but it moves a lot more like a Shape-shifting, well, it's a shape-shifting 5x5x5 five by five by five made by, of course, Trey Poom. But it looks a lot more like the 5x5x3. Five by five by we'll put this back long in here as well. 6x6x7, six six which I might as well put along over here. 6x6x6, 6x6x7, 7x7x6. Our closest thing to a 7 series over here. 
wide angle shot here moves very well. So basically, all of these different puzzles, all of these different forms, pretty unique in terms of how they're built. Might as well put this next to its brethren over here. But once again, saw strategy, very similar. In terms of the seven layer series, we've got the seven by seven by three, which also shape shifts. Really smooth moving puzzle by Trepum. And then we've got the seven by seven by one, two, three, four, five. This is among my more favorite puzzles because the movement is so smooth. Another, another Trefum creation, Trefum product, a modification of, a, of another cube, another puzzle, basically. So there's the seven layer series. Among the eight layer, I only have one right now, which is this fantastic eight by eight by six. Another interesting and fantastic floppy shape-shifting puzzle that shape-shifts in all directions. This one is a little clunky just in terms of its um, stability, but still very fun puzzle. So here's a panned out view of what was my cuboid collections, um, collection at that time. Now this introduces the concept of another kind of cuboid that um, I started to become interested in, which is the bricks. And that is typified by this. A one by two by three. Now this one by two by three is a fairly simple solve. Really it's, uh, it's, it's at its most basic. But as you start to extend this concept even further, you end up with very interesting and strange types of uh, cuboids. Might as well introduce this one too. It looks like it's the same kind of thing, which it is. The only difference is that it exerts uh, another interesting property of shape shifting. It's an elemental form of a brick cuboid, but shape shifts. Might as well get this back. So this is a kind of a worthy puzzle next to this one. But if you're gonna do one by two by three, you'll do a two by three by four. Now at this point, we see some interesting properties with this. This is one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So if I turn this side into this, it doesn't shape shift. However, in one of the layers, we have a one, two, and one, two, three, four. So if I turn it this way, it does shape shift. So this particular kind of puzzle, called the bricks, doesn't sh shape shift in all layers, only the ones that have an even to even symmetry. So we have a one by two by three, a two by three by four, and of course the much beloved three by four by five. Now, this is a two by three by four, so the, the um, even layers turn into each other. So we've got two turning into the four layer and shape shifting, but in the three by four by five, you've got the uh, three layer turning into the five layer. So we have one, two, three, turning into one, two, three, four, five. So in this case, it was even turning into even. This is odd turning into odd, and we can shape shift in this direction. But it's solved very similarly. We have a top side that you can only do 180 degree turns, and a axial side that can do 90 degree turns. Might as well put this where it needs to be. One by two by three, two by three by four, three by four by five, which means we also need to have a four by five by six. Now in this case, we turn the four layer to the six layer side, and in this case, we can do our shape shifting this way. Once again, more of a giant cube type solve, but an interesting one nonetheless. One by two by three, two by three by four, three by four by five, four by five by six, and then the newest, Five by six by seven, this giant puzzle over here. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the portion here that can actually shape shift. Be the wider angle over here. So the shape shifting is once again only in one axis. But so many parts there are here. So in this case, it's this piece and this piece that turns around in this puzzle that tends to shed a lot of dust mostly, but still turns very nice. Five by six by seven will take center stage here. 
All right, and that's about as far as these bricks will go. Now there's others that have similar properties to this. We might as well do the two by three by five as well. So once again, take the three, move it into the five, and we'll also get shape shifting over here. Once again, solved pretty much the same way, solved in a similar way. So we'll put this in between here. And of course I have to mention the one by two by five. That should uh, find its place with a, a more rare kind of a cuboid. Another Ola Jansen creation. Might as well mention this guy here too. A three by four by six. So you guessed it, I can shape shift along this plane over here. There's other types of bricks like this that have other variable forms. And that's gonna be, say, this guy over here. A three by five by six. So the three has to turn into the five over here. And now we can attempt our shape shifting. So that's pretty good over here. But again, the solve strategy is pretty much the same. It's just fascinating to build the collection like this. I think we can put this here, we can put this here. Okay, and there's our cuboid collection of bricks over here. Now I should also point out that we've got this little guy here too, uh, four by four by two, which we'll put over here, more of a pillow version. And then we lead to the one example of an ultimate, what's called an ultimate shapeshifter. Among my favorite is this guy. This is the uh, three by five by seven, which has the unusual property of shapeshifting in all directions. This, this, this offers a very unique and interesting challenge and is among, among my more favorite puzzles to solve. Pretty smooth moving. Once again, challenging the limits of three-dimensional printing. It looks like a brick, but it shape shifts and moves in all directions pretty nicely too. Turn, turn, and turn. And this will belong over here. This gives us a little aerial view of all the cuboids that I have, that I care to have in my collection at this point. From the cubic puzzles to the cuboid puzzles over here, the two layer series, three layer series, four layer series, a couple of odds and ends, the five layer series along here, coming to the six layer series, seven and eight layer series, and of course the infamous, my favorite, among my favorite of puzzles or cuboids, the bricks, and of course the uh, ultimate shapeshifter. And that takes its place amongst uh, the rest of the collection, helping me conquer my fear of the shape-shifting. But as I started to expand into more, there was of course modifications, more and more mods, as well as mods of cuboids, as well as others that took the place as part of the collection. And if you get tired of, cu of the cubes that you have, you can go back to square one, which is uh, sort of a different strategy, but not completely different. If you like the square one, then you can do the super square one. Super square one, meaning that you have a little bit more motion within the corners here. Adds a little bit more of a challenge, I suppose. And uh, if you like that, then you can do the three by three by two version of the square one. And if that's not good enough, then try the super square one. Fun to try to solve. Not a lot of fun to try to move. Adding the square ones to that. And just to beat it to death, why not do a barrel square one, which is a, a kind of the same sort of a form. There's other types of square ones out there, but once you get it, once you get the hang of it, you've really just uh, done everything that you can with the series. And that's about as far as I needed to go with the squares. And we'll put that in their respective place. So you can take a cube and you can combine it with a pyraminx type concept and end up with a pyraminx that moves like a cube. Is it possible to take a pyraminx and turn it into a cube that turns more like a pyraminx? Well, you can, as this biceps bisects right down the center, and you get a skew. 
A skew is basically a cube that turns more like a pyramix. So instead of combining these together and get, getting this, we'll just take this, put it into a cube form, and get this handsome guy over here, which is a skew. And this has a style of solving which is not unlike what the pyramix is. So what this does is this splits right down the center. Well, if you're gonna have a skew puzzle, you might as well go to the next higher order, which is the master skew. One of my favorites actually, because when you scramble it, it looks really, well, chaotic. So the skew, the master skew, and then there's variations of that. So you might as well get this diamond skew over here, which was really the very first video I put together when I made the decision to try to share what I'm doing, share my strategies with others. With that came the skew ultimate. Pretty much the same thing as this, but just the shape modification of that. And if you're going to do that, you might as well have this version of a diamond skew, an octahedral skew. Kind of moves the same way, slices down the center, and uh, another addition to that. And that's about as far as I wanted to go with the skew series. So we'll let that take its proper place. Well, so much that I like this octahedral version of the skew, I decided to delve into other types of octahedrons. If I were to take the octahedral skew, and uh, come or diamond cube, however you want to call it, and the master cube. Put it together, you'll have this fellow over here, which is a face turning octahedron or FTO. If you're going to have a face turning octahedron, which is solved very similarly to this, then you're going to have a this kind of an octahedron, which doesn't turn at the face, but turns at the tops here. It turns just like a pyramid. So this is a combination of these two. This would be a combination of well this and uh, I guess the pyramix. Anyway, although they look exactly the same because they function differently, the solves are very different. This is more like a pyramix and this is more like the, uh, well, master scoop.